Shalom, friends. Welcome back to the Hebrew Revelation channel. I'm Chris Melnick. I've been asked a few times about using the Stellarium program that you saw in the videos. This is the first in a series of short tutorial videos that will help you to get more out of Stellarium. Let's take a look at the basics. In Stellarium, you will find two icon menus, one to the left and the other at the bottom of the window. Move your cursor to the left edge of the screen. Here you will see six icons. Let's start with the location window. It looks like compass points. Click on it to open the location window. In this window you will see a world map. A red arrow points to the current location. You can click anywhere on the map to choose a new location. For small countries like Israel, you may need to be more specific. To the bottom right side you will find the current country listed. If you click on the arrow next to country you will find other choices. Select your desired country location. After you choose a new country you will see that a list of city names for that region appears above next to the world map. In this list look for your desired city. The next icon we will look at is the date time window icon. The date and time window is broken down into year, month, and day on the left side, and on the right is the hour, minute, and second. This is the only window that I usually leave open. I like to keep it to the right side at either the bottom or top of the window. You can move any of the windows by hovering over the top of the window and holding down the left mouse button then move your mouse to your desired location. Often I will move it so that only the date is visible. You will see that above each unit is an arrowhead. The top one advances time and the bottom arrow goes back in time. You can also double click the unit of time to highlight it and then enter the year you want to observe. If you want to see BC years, enter a zero first and then click on the down arrow. You can continue clicking the down arrow, or you can highlight the number, leave the negative sign there, and enter the new number for the year that you want to see. Remember that Stellarium will be off by one year when looking at BC events. Add 1 to the negative number you see. A display year of 1 is really the year 2 BC. Next is the Sky and Viewing Options window. Within this window, you will have five tabs at the top. The first is the Sky tab. On the Sky page, you can change settings for what you see on the screen. The only adjustment I normally make in the Stars section is the Labels and Markers slider. By moving it to the right, you will see the names of more stars. Under Solar System Objects, I only change the Moon scale. You can see that the Moon is currently at 2x magnification. I like to change it to 9x to make the moon easier to spot. I don't use the DSO, that's Deep Space Objects. Under the Markings tab, you can change the shape of the sky and view grid lines. Normally, I only check the galactic equator box in this section. In the Projection section, the only change I make is to the vertical viewpoint offset. It moves the sky up or down. I like a setting of negative 35. I don't like using landscapes, so I don't change anything there. Next is the Sky Lore tab. This is where you will find constellations of different cultures and options to change how they are displayed. The default sky culture is Western. In the next video, I will show you how you create your own sky culture. You then have the search window. This is self-explanatory. After that is the Configuration window icon. You may want to make some changes on the Information tab. I like to keep the selected object information set to None. Here's what it looks like when you use the other settings. The only other change I make is to check the Select Single Constellation box on the Navigation tab. When this box is checked, then any time you click on a star in a constellation, only that constellation's lines and art are shown. 
when you click outside of that constellation, then all of the constellations will appear again. You can make more than one individual constellation visible if you click on a star in another constellation. To use this feature to display a few chosen constellations will require that you are able to identify stars and constellations without the lines or art being displayed. We now will look at the bottom menu bar. The first icon is used to toggle on or off the constellation lines. Second is for the constellation labels and next is for the constellation art. The fourth and fifth icons turn on or off grid lines. Next is the ground icon. This determines if you see ground at the bottom of the window. It simulates standing in a particular location, not a feature I typically use. Using the telescope icon will determine if the ground is horizontal or not. Cardinal points turns on the compass cardinal points. We then have the atmosphere icon. It adds haze to the screen to simulate light pollution. Here's what it looks like during the day and with the ground and cardinal points turned on. After that is the deep space objects icon. Leave it off unless you specifically want to see these objects. To me, they just create clutter in the sky. Planet labels is self-explanatory. One question I've had has to do with image stabilization. In Stellarium, use the telescope icon to stabilize the image. Here's what it looks like with it on and off. The larger the time unit change, the more movement you're going to see. Next is the center on selected object icon. It looks like four arrows pointing to the center. It will keep the window centered on any object that you click on. The object will then have four red lines around it. The night mode icon is next. It is used to preserve your night vision if you're outside looking at the stars. You then have the full screen mode icon followed by the toggle meteor showers icon. I prefer to keep the meteor showers off unless I specifically want information about them. Again, it just adds clutter in most cases. I will skip the next four icons. They're not used very often. You can explore them on your own. At the end are buttons for adjusting the play speed. In the next video, we'll take a look at how you can change the names of the constellations. Blessings and Shalom until then.